Welcome, 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 welcome to the Wine of the Month Club, and I'm here with Mumbles, and uh, he's <laughs> yeah, you want to wipe? Both my ears are messed up. I woke up the other morning about three weeks ago. My pillow was covered with blood. Oh, great! That's yeah. that's a great way to start a wine tasting. <laughs> so that's why I was going. Hey, uh, this is the April selections for 2019. A little behind the eight ball here, but we are here to taste the wines with you. And I'm here with Ed Masiana, and we're going to discuss. 40 years ago. I love this 40 years ago. 79. 79. 1979. Which means we're already seven years into the club. That's right. And it's still 1979. And in fact, the other day when we were talking to Michael, Michael wanted... Michael Kerkorian is writing a story about my father and the history of California wine. It relates to consumer wine, (laughs) direct to the consumer market. Mm Mm-hmm. And he asked me for customers that were, you know, been around for a while. Right, and I think that's great. I, I think that's your that's your best. Uh, and I found guys still around from 78, 79. That's right. You know, a lot from the 80s. Yep. The hundreds of shipments they've gotten. It's I know. phenomenal. It's great. I mean, you know. Nobody a, in this business can say that. That's a that's a real testament to, to uh, the value. And um, I, I thought, you know, the, what I read uh, from the beginning is, is it's really interesting. You know, I mean, a lot of stuff I didn't know, especially about your dad's history in Egypt and, right. you know, and and, uh, <clears throat> and the whole thing. But it was kind of interesting that your dad and I kind of learned wine together, you know, because he, I mean, I, I, he bought the he bought the, the store in 64 and I came along in 69. Yeah, it was around 67, 69. Oh, was it? Was it really that late? Yeah. Okay. And so... Well, that's right. He started uh, the first. His one. first store was there. Uh, yeah, but so so it's like, and he he admitted he said I don't really know that much about wine. But by the time I got there, he you know being an incredibly smart guy, he read a lot and studied a lot and tasted a lot, and so he he, he became very knowledgeable. But well, uh, you're gonna find that story available. We're gonna publish. I'm gonna publish the short story. I think I'm not sure yet, but it's anticipating maybe the story can be developed even further uh, as a book. Of some sort. So or we'll I think it'd be a great documentary. A but, great documentary. But great speaking documentary. of 40 years ago, 40 years ago, and, and this is one of the things that just absolutely slays me. What did we do 40 years ago? 1975, Louis Martini Barbera. Okay, now, most people in 79 not only never heard of Italy making Barbera, they never heard, obviously ever heard of California. California Barbera, you know, for sure. And I'm thinking that may be one of the first Barberas ever produced in California. You know, and um, and I remember that wine. It was, of course, you know, back then it was so cool to be in the wine business because every wine that came out, well, you really had to taste it. You really had to. Th- yeah, you could care less because there's just too much of that. So my dad writes in here, the Barbera from which this wine was made is grown predominantly or principally in Piemonte, which is the northeast, uh, northwest part of Italy, uh, which is true. How about that for legitimate arguments? Well, it's not an argument. It's in, the truth. In the, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and the wine was a Dormant. Beaujolais Blanc. Now that now, was that's pretty rare. That too. was really rare. You don't see Beaujolais Blanc. I I would gander that there's maybe one percent of the Beaujolais that's white, if that. Yeah, you know, that much. You know, I mean, it just there's and nothing from there. This particular, according to him, this particular Beaujolais Blanc which is Dormont was from the northern part of Beaujolais, which would put it near Maconnais. And Chablis. That would Who's make sense. Yeah, that, that sense. would make sense. Well, Chablis is, no, it'd be put it near the Macanay. The Macanay, you know, and, and Macon, the Macon, yeah. And so, anyway, and so that's what we did 70, no, 40, 40 years ago. Uh, what we did 70 years ago is I was just a mere tot. <laughs> mere tot. Welcome. Hey, ho, April Vintner Series 2019. Hey, way to go, Ed. Wine Talks with Paul Conker, and here I am with Ed Masiana. <laughs> Do you watch any of those shows like uh, American Idol or um, America's Got Talent? No. Okay. <laughs> That's the end of that conversation. That's the end of that conversation. No, I don't watch anything. So, uh, boy, I'm looking at this list going, wow, we had some pretty good wines. Now, the April wines, uh, we're a little behind the eight ball here, so this video, by the time you get it, you should have it well in hand and may have tasted it already, and we have plenty in stock if you would like to purchase some more. Please visit uh, Wine Talks with Paul Callum Carrion. We've got some really interesting conversations, none the least of which include Ed. They do? My which goodness. I, which yeah. I thought was fascinating. Yes, yeah, so I saw it. But I just interviewed uh, the proprietaire du Chateau Talbot, and I interviewed this really sharp young lady, Juliana Del Guila. She owns a winery in Armenia and in Argentina. Oh, wow. Her uncle does. And she runs the whole show. That's quite a trick. Passionate, passionate young lady. So... <clears throat> 
Check it out. Check it out. Starting with our uh, Heritage Merlot from our friend Claire Barroy, uh, who's our French connection in uh, in France. She's there now, actually, looking for wines for us. And this is one of the things she found a few months ago. You know, ago. It's, just, it's amazing how much how many really great wines there are. And she, she just brought so many incredible wines here. I bought some wines from her personally, too, because she just she just finds these great deals you know, and I mean, you know, it's not hard to believe. I mean, let's face it, between France and Italy, they make more than 40% of all the wine made in the world, okay? So <laughs> there's a lot of wine to choose from there. This is a language like what is the Colline du Bordy. So that's the hills of Bordy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not just straight Languedoc, but this is Merlot, which, which wow. is fascinating to me because if you asked me even 10 years ago, how's that Merlot from the Languedoc? And you go, what? Yeah, huh? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't exist. And they've learned how to trellis and grow the grapes and extract from them. And this is, I think this is a fascinating Merlot. It's, you, you're really tasting the grape in this one. You know? Yeah, you know, you're, you're, getting, you're getting beautiful uh, Merlot character and, uh, you know, really good beginning, middle, finish. All the components are there. Um, you know, $19.99 on the shelf and $13.99 mm. reorder price. Uh, it's Love the acid, the flavor. Yeah, yeah no, it's really, it's, it's just a great food wine. You could have this with anything. You could have it with steak. You could have it with chicken. You could have it with, you know, pork. Think of a French dish. Cassoulet. Oh, French fries. <laughs> <laughs> Toast. <laughs> I don't know. You, you know, know, I belong to a website called Academy de Goût, which is Academy of Taste. It's all French. The whole thing's in French. But the recipes are phenomenal. I'm going to start making them. They're almost as good as the Italians, huh? But I guess I'm going to try to translate it right. Yeah, right. Don't forget everything's in milliliters. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I put in two tablespoons of salt. Whoops, boy, that was a lot of salt. <laughs> Cheers. But there's chefs from all over France that contribute to the site. Really? Yeah, it's really good. <coughs> well, so, now, Ed was complaining about this wine earlier that it was too oaky. But that's the way they made them, and that's the way they make them. And I have customers that look for this oaky... Popsicle stick in the mouth. Well, it's, it, 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 as, it's as Robert Davi Jr. said, you don't want splinters in your mouth when you drink it. I've, I've had enough. I've tasted oakier wines. But I get tons of butterscotch and vanilla mm -hmm. in the nose. Now, this is very interesting because the mm. bottle that I tasted mm. was definitely oakier than this. This is not that oaky. This is more like the Shalom of gold, you know. This is there, historical stuff, you know, Shalone District, Gavilon Wines. I think it's the last vintage they made of this particular type of wine. Of Gavilon? Yeah, it's called yeah. Gavilon. Well, it's interesting this because is, this is something that happens rarely in Europe, and it, it's the only time it's happened here. There is the Shalone District. That's an appellation of origin, yes. you know, and there's only one winery there, Shalone. Oh. That's it. There's, <laughs> there's no other winery there. <laughs> so Appalachian owned winery that is mm -hmm. very very rare i mean i, I can i didn't think of that. that's very interesting i can think of mm -hmm. one wine in france you know that makes uh uh viognier uh you know chateau de something or another and and it's an appellation and they're the only ones there you know uh, so this is just historically gavilan the whole district but i, I like this wine because you get that oak but the finish it, is nice and long, the, and, and it's not, it's, it's not very city. oaky at all, actually. Yeah, it's not. And uh, I've had a lot of success with the wine. People really like it. The, on both sides of the fence, the ones that like the oaky Chardonnays and the ones that don't, actually. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain about this at all. I mean, I really wouldn't. It's got. It's for me. It's right on the cusp of oak, but but it, it, it saves itself with the great finish. You don't you don't finish with all this wood in your mouth, you know, spitting out mm -hmm. toothpicks and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, twenty one ninety nine a shelf is actually a really good price. Twelve ninety nine is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm at a ninety six. Ninety six, awesome. Isn't Absolutely. That, isn't that something? Quatre vingt dix. Quatre vingt dix. Quatre vingt seize. Quatre vingt seize. Okay, and here's the now we did the pile driver Zin in the class in the vintage series, but here's their red blend, which is a little forthcoming uh, Paso. I, all this stuff reeks of Paso, though it says California, mm -hmm. right? Oh, it is passing. No wonder. <laughs> yeah. Now, see this nose a little more rounded than the other one? Mm hmm Yeah, and this is a little fleshier, a little more expansive. Um, mm. Wow. 
And he, they named it Pile Driver because they wanted to let you know it's a big wine, very, very big wine. And so Pile Drivers are big, and so we named it that. Well, that, that makes a ton of sense. <laughs> it's an I mean, expensive label, named though. it Rock because <laughs> those are big, too. But <laughs> I, You know, I just bought a book on I went. We were at the beach this weekend. I took my book on rock. My daughter says, what are you reading? I go, book on rocks. Because it's about, it's a really interesting book about the soils of vineyards. Well, I mean, that's... And what they contribute that's in the whole most, history. most important thing. It is. You know, so I thought, I'm going to read about it. And did you learn anything? It's a rock. I feel like Charlie Brown. What'd you get? I got a rock. I'm at a 97 on this. I think the wine's absolutely I'm a stunning. It's just aged perfectly. Yeah, it's a 2013, I believe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2013. And so it's got some, it's got got a little age on it, but it's not great. showing any age. I mean, oh, it's I still, think it's just it's rounded, still, perfect. It's still rough around the now, edges. Now, speaking of a little age, a 14 shard. But tell me, this is just turning this elegant flavor bomb. Hmm. Isn't that great? Rock Rabbit. What the hell are these names from Rock Rabbit? <laughs> I tasted a bunch of their wines. There were about six or seven of them, and, I, and two or three of them I thought were really good values. And this one, I was fascinated because of the age and the complexity of the nose. Wow, it's really round. It's got like both red and green apple in the, in the front, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of nice flavor. Very little wood, if any. I did not know it's 14. You would not know it's a 14. Well, I mean, it's not that long ago. I mean, it's California. On. No, Central Coast. Central Coast, yeah. No, you could tell ah, because it's got yeah, good acidity. Right. Now I get it. But that's, I just think del it's... that's delicious. I mean, that's a, you know, at, at, at uh, 18 dollars it's delicious. At twelve ninety nine, it's incredible. I'm at a 97 on that, too. I, I, I'm a 98. I think this is fun. Really, and as much really as, as, as important as that wine is, you know, it's a, a bigger, more verbose wine. This is just as much fun. Well, they're, they're different profiles of Chardonnay, and that's, you know, that's what makes wine drinking fun, and sometimes it makes it crazy because, you know, they all say Chardonnay, but they're not all the same wine. Yeah, exactly. And on that These note... These are both 14s, too. Which I think was a C-sharp. Ah. <laughs> Cheers. 